Welcome to Church Online with the Stewart Church of Christ. I'm so excited that we have another opportunity to worship together, although distant. This here will replace the Sunday evening lesson. We'll have songs and prayers, an opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, and of course, a message from God's Word. I'm very excited to be here with you today, even though I am in my office and you are hopefully in your home staying safe. I'm excited to praise God, so let's get started. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. to sing its word. It sounds like music in mine ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because He first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Will you pray with me? A great and awesome God in heaven, we come before you to thank you for a, another opportunity we've had to dive into your word and to sing praises to you and worship you together, Father. We thank you for this technology that we have today that even though we're supposed to be separate, we can still be together and we can still interact with each other, Father. Father, there are many on our prayer list that we ask uh, for healing from you, Father, uh, for guidance and for strength. Father, there are some who have lost loved ones, and we ask that you comfort them as only you can, uh, especially now that we're separate and we can't always rely on physical comfort from each other. 
Uh, we ask for an extra blessing from you on them, Father. <clears throat> Father, those who are under financial stress, Father, we ask that you bless them, uh, you reassure them that you are in control, and that no matter what happens, uh, you will take care of them, Father. <clears throat> and Father, we ask that you continue to forgive us uh, every day, as we know we need it every single day, uh, and that you'll always be with us, and you'll always keep us safe. And uh, we know that at the end, Father, we will get to be with you in heaven. Uh, and by, that is by far the best blessing you can give us. We thank you for everything. In your son's name we pray. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. desire and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to the goal. Trust, Trust in him. Who who leads you, he is king will your soul. keep your soul, that the world know where you be belong. faithful, look to, to Jesus and pray, him and pray, lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain, there are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to goal. the goal. Trust, Trust in him who leadeth who the way. You. He is will your soul. keep your soul that the all know where you be belong. faithful. Look to, to Jesus and pray. Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. 
When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust Him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to the goal. Trust in Him. Him. Who leads you, he is king, will your soul. keep your soul, let the world know where you be belong. faithful, look to, to Jesus and pray. him and pray, lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. I recently read an interview with a denominational preacher, and he was asked about the concept of baptism, and specifically baptism for the purpose of salvation. And in his response, he said simply, I just preach Jesus. And the idea of preaching Jesus is fine. I love the idea of preaching Jesus. Like most people, I understand that all scripture is equally inspired, but I do hold a special place in my heart for the quotations directly from the Savior. And I think that's understandable. But when people say preach Jesus, I don't think they understand what it means. Does it include baptism? If so, what else does it include? In Acts chapter 8, we read of the conversation of the Ethiopian eunuch who is on his return from Jerusalem. He was met by Philip. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 29 say, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all of her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was returning, and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. This eunuch then goes ahead and invites Philip to explain a passage from the book of Isaiah. We read about this in verses 30 through 34. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said to him, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was, he was led as sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before his shearer is silent. So he opened his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away, and he and who will declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does this prophet say this, of himself or of some other man? Beginning with this passage, Isaiah 53, he notes to himself that Philip was preaching to him about Jesus. In Acts 8, 35, it says, then Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture and preached Jesus to him. We can learn what it means to preach Jesus from what is written regarding the conversation of the Ethiopian eunuch. So let's look at this conversation. Let's look at Isaiah 53. Let's look at Acts chapter eight and see what it truly means to preach Jesus. Well, to begin with, it means that Jesus died for our sins. This passage from Isaiah reveals the reason for the Messiah's suffering. Isaiah. 53 verses 4 through 6 read, Surely he has borne our griefs and has carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, for he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We can continue reading this passage. We can go forward a little bit to verses 10 and 11 as it reads, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He, was, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the, ple the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear the iniquities of them all. So from the beginning, we see this passage that the eunuch is reading, Isaiah chapter 53, teaches us directly that Jesus died for our sins. Christ's death for our sins was fundamental to the gospel that was being preached at the time, especially by 
Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in verses 1 through 3, it reads, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, in which you stand, by which you are also saved, if you hold fast to that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. Preaching Jesus necessitates that we proclaim his death for our sins. Preaching Jesus means we have to talk about Isaiah 53. Preaching Jesus means we have to talk about Philip's conversation with the Ethiopian eunuch. Preaching Jesus means we have to acknowledge the sacrifice of our Savior. Preaching Jesus also means we have to recognize that Jesus has been exalted. Isaiah's prophecy begins and ends with, the, with, the, <laughs> with exalting the Messiah. Isaiah 52, 13 says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled by the very high. And in 53, verse 12, it says, Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made an, inter an intercession for these transgressors. transgressors. The theme of Jesus, the theme that Peter is talking about in Acts chapter 2, is the idea of Jesus being exalted. In Acts 2, 36 reads, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Preaching Jesus, therefore, pronounces that he has been exalted by God. From this small quotation, from this small passage in Isaiah, we learn that preaching Jesus includes preaching how Jesus died for our sins and how Jesus has been exalted to the right hand of God. Now let's learn about what preaching Jesus means from the eunuch's questions. Notably, the importance of baptism. Notice the first question asked by the eunuch in chapter 8, verse 36, says, Now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? See, here is water. Preaching Jesus clearly included preaching on baptism. As Philip said, he was only preaching Jesus. Then if he was only preaching Jesus, and Jesus doesn't include the concept of baptism, then where did the eunuch get this concept? Preaching Jesus clearly necessitates preaching on baptism. Indeed, baptism was an important part to Jesus and his apostles. Jesus commanded it in giving the great commission. We read about it in Matthew 28 and Mark 16 as well. Mark 16, 15 and 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. The apostles also commanded it in their preaching. Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said to him, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The apostles also wrote of its value in their letters, in their epistles. In Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 4, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, there is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of filth from the flesh, but the answer of good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Preaching Jesus obviously includes preaching baptism. It includes the importance of baptism, but it also includes the immediacy of baptism. The Ethiopian eunuch was anxious to obey and Philip was willing to accommodate him in Acts chapter 8, continuing in verse 38. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized them. Why the urgency? Why not wait until they got to town or to a building or to somewhere where there are people? Instead, they did it immediately. The moment they saw water that was ready for them, the eunuch was ready to be baptized. This isn't the first time we saw that baptism happening immediately, the immediacy of baptism. 
In Acts chapter 16, verses 30 through 33, it reads, And he brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? So they believed, believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, to all who were in his house, and he took them to the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, and immediately he and all of his family was baptized. The reason for such urgency is clearly taught throughout scripture. Baptism is for the remissions of sins. We see this in Acts 2.38, as we already read in Acts 22.16. And now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. We experience the working of God and we put on Christ in baptism. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have also put on Christ. Preaching Jesus, therefore, calls upon people to be baptized. Not only be baptized, period, but to be baptized quickly. From the eunuch's question, the importance and the immediacy of baptism is clearly taught. But let us be careful to know what we learn from, learn about preaching Jesus from Philip's qualifications. First thing we notice is the necessity of faith. Philip's response to the eunuch's questions qualified who should be baptized. Continuing in Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 37, it says, Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you believe, comma, you may. Faith is a necessary prerequisite to baptism. Indeed, faith is necessary to salvation. We read about this in John we read about it in John chapter 8, verse 24. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Through faith, we can have a life in his name. Continuing in John, in John chapter 20, verses 30 through 31, it reads, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. Baptism is a working of God when our faith is present, when our faith is at its highest. We read about this in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through the faith and the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Preaching Jesus therefore demands a faith in Jesus to be taught. Not just that baptism is necessary, not just that baptism needs to happen quickly, not that just that baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, but faith is a requirement for baptism. Preaching Jesus certainly involves more. Preaching Jesus involves repentance. We read about this in Luke chapter 24. Preaching Jesus includes preaching the resurrection of Christ. You can read about that in Acts chapter 17. Yet from the conversation of the Ethiopian eunuch, preaching Jesus must include preaching about his suffering, preaching about his exaltation, preaching the necessity and the immediacy of baptism by a sincere, faith-filled believer. So often many do not preach Jesus the same way that Philip did. So often in today's world, preaching Jesus means just looking at a few examples of what Jesus did. Looking at how Jesus said to treat the poor, to treat the lowly. And yes, those are important parts of Jesus's ministry, important parts of Jesus's call to be a Christian. But that's not all that preaching Jesus is. Because Philip said he was simply going to preach Jesus. And he taught the Ethiopian eunuch about Jesus' sacrifice, about his resurrection. He taught him about the importance of baptism, how baptism by a faithful believer allows you to have a new life with Christ. And so often I think that's forgotten. So my question today is, one, have you truly been taught Jesus? And two, when you're out in your life, in your day-to-day -day world, when you are in work, when you're with your friends, when you're with your coworkers, when you're with your family, do you preach Jesus to them the same way that Philip preached Jesus to this one man from Ethiopia?
the answer is no, now is always a good time to start. If you need help, now is always a good time to reach out. If you haven't been taught Jesus, then yes, now is also another time to reach out. If you have not followed these teachings of Jesus, then again, now is a time to reach out. If you have any needs at all, the local congregation here at Stewart is more than happy to help you. I hope you take this lesson to heart, you apply it to your lives, and most importantly, I hope that you have been taught Jesus. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master. Savior Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place help prepare our minds for the lord's supper i'd like to read a verse from first corinthians chapter 11 this is the apostle paul speaking the author of the book for i pass on to you what i received from the lord himself on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces, and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me, often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Will you give thanks for the fruit of the vine and the bread with me? Dear Lord, our Father, we are so thankful for everything that you have given us. We are thankful that you know us, that you know we need this weekly reminder of your sacrifice. Lord, we're thankful that you know we are weak and that these emblems can help remind us that you love us that you gave your son for us, that he gave his life so that we could have a new life with you. Lord, thank you for the bread, which represents his body, his flesh that was pierced, nailed to the cross, God. Lord, we also ask that you be with us at this time, so that we can examine ourselves, look into our hearts and see how we can better live for you. 
Lord, we're also thankful for the fruit of the vine, an emblem that represents the blood of your son, Jesus, the blood that was shed for us, that poured out from his body when he was nailed to the cross. God, we know we can't ever do anything to deserve that sacrifice, but we ask that you be with us now, that as we look into our hearts, we see our purpose and that our purpose is to serve you. God, help us remind us at this time that we are to be your servants here on earth, representatives of your people to show people the covenant that you made with us. God, we love and respect you. We're so thankful for all that you have given us, especially at this time. And it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent Him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side. 
to be led by your staff and rod, and to be called a Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, Till I am just a Lamb of God. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. O oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know He'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. O oh Lord, You know I have no friend like You. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. O oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. What are you about with me? Dear God, thank you for waking us up on another beautiful day on your earth, and thank you for letting us have this means of, by technology to worship you and still learn, learn more about your word, even though we're not allowed to gather together as a church family today, and Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you give us, and please let everyone that is sick and struggling during this time, during this virus, let them turn to you and realize that all the blessings come to you, and let us all see the good in this situation, Lord, and please let us devote all this free time we have to learn more about your word, and please be with all the medical workers and nurses and doctors that are battling this on the front line and thank you for their help lord and thank you for making them strong and able to do that for us and please let this worship service be pleasing in your sight and i pray that we will be able to gather together as a church family soon in jesus name amen <laughs>